Hello, and welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where it looks from the uh, blurb that accompanies the puzzle that this was um, one of the puzzles used in the Times Crossword Championship a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this was from the first semi-final, so it's, it's not a puzzle um, that I did at the time. Um, now, what I thought we'd do today, in the spirit of looking at um, you know how to make progress in these sorts of puzzles if you're if you're not an experienced solver, is we're going to work really hard and go through the clues and try and pick out uh, anagrams and other very simple clues and just see how far we get with this approach. Um, so I picked this puzzle for a reason because um, when I solved it, I, I noticed there were a number of anagrams in there, but. But let's do this and see how much progress we can make with what should be a very difficult times crossword because it was used, I say, in the crossword championship. Now remember, when we're looking at crossword clues, we're always going to look for a definition at one end of the clue. Um, so it's either going to be at the beginning or the end. And when we're looking for anagrams, we're looking for words that indicate some sort of rearrangement or destruction. Um, and you know, the other thing that I think you get better at as you get more experienced is equating, well, there's two things you should look for. Firstly, series of words or um, particular words that exactly match the answer length of the clue. So here I'm looking immediately at 10 across. This is a nine, nine letter clue and the first word is gasometer, which is quite a strange word already. Um, and even if I didn't look at the whole of the rest of the clue, my brain is looking at that and it's it's thinking megastore because I can see that there is an anagram of gasometer that is megastore. Um, and we go on, redeveloped, okay, there's the anagram indicator, a retail outlet, okay, it's a megastore. So there's two things to look for. Firstly, this matching of uh, either uh, words or either individual words or series of words in the clue that, that match to the length of the answer. And the second thing to look for is unusual phrasing. Um, so often a setter might have to really stretch uh, the phrasing of the clue in order to accommodate difficult letters for his anagram. And that can be a clue to the fact that there is an anagram going on. So. Let's continue down and see if we can find any more. And, and let's look at 15 across. And again, I think this is a, a good example of those two things that I've just mentioned. So you can see that the clue is 10 letters long. And it contains, you know, the clue contains the words, the ball in. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not too familiar with the bore in. I certainly can't think of a context in which the bore in has a short synonym. Um, so I'm automatically thinking that the setter has had to use these particular letters for a reason, probably an anagram. So let's look at the rest of the clue and see if we can detect what's going on. Well, we've got needing to get drunk. Well, that sounds like um, it's telling us that the, what's coming after this phrase needs to get drunk. It needs to be rearranged. It needs to be um, you know, made tipsy in some way. Okay, so the boring, we think that's the anagram, and is constantly in mind. So I need something that means constantly in mind. Obviously, with the three letter word there, you should always be thinking of the as the possibility. Now, interestingly, I normally disregard that because it's very strange actually to have the bore in and then one of the uh, words in the answer to be the as well because you know the the hasn't really been anagrammed um, but in this case that doesn't seem to have um, you know that restriction doesn't seem to have been applied so we need okay so we're left with just an anagram of bore in so it looks like it's either in or on at the start and you can see, okay, so that's going to be on the brain. Something that's constantly on your mind, it's on the brain. 
So there we go, we've got two reasonably long answers already, simply by trying to find anagrams. So let's look at the next clue. Is this an anagram? Rebuke on losing cape and cloak. Okay, I'm not seeing anything there that suggests anagram to me. I'm, I'm seeing suggestions that words might need to lose a C, because C is very often an abbreviation for cape, but not seeing any anagrams. Let's carry on. Request to have regular meetings with King. There's nothing in there to indicate an anagram. Choreographic number about 100 in Hamlet, perhaps, again, not seeing anything. Um, choreographic, I don't think, can be an anagram indicator. To choreograph could perhaps be an anagram indicator, but not choreographic. Um, I clash with mob running all over the shop. Right, okay, here's another good example where I'm thinking anagram. Um, now, the difficult thing with this clue is working out what we are meant to anagram, because there's a couple of expressions within this clue that suggests, you know, it could be indicating an anagram. All over the shop would certainly be an anagram indicator, but that would mean we were trying to anagram mob and running, which is ten letters, so that, that's not going to be right. And you can see here, I think, that if you take the words I clash and the word mob, you get the required nine letters that we're looking for. Running could be the anagram indicator then, and then all over the shop would be the definition. So have a think about that and see if you can come up with a with an anagram. Pause the video if you need to. And I'm going to type that. shambolic. So another good lengthy answer that gives us a lot of checking letters that we can use. Let's carry on. Moonville on reflection of the neglected place. Okay, this isn't an anagram, but this is another sort of writing because when we get these expressions oddly neglected or evenly, um, the setter is is trying to hint that we should be looking at um, you know a particular pattern of letters within a word. So if we oddly neglect uh, the letters in Loonville and just take the even letters and then we reflect them, we reverse them, you can see, I think, that you can make the word loo, which means place. So again, always be looking out for that sort of thing, either, you know, oddly neglected or evenly. Opera stars, clearly not an anagram. It's a double definition. You need a word that means an opera and a word that means stars. Confess and talk about sex repeatedly. Not seeing anything there to suggest anagram, um, so let's move on. Endless Oriental Festival. Again, nothing anagram related. Attitude I take on God. Again, nothing there to suggest an anagram. So we've done pretty well though. I mean, we've got um, we've got three long answers, one short, just by focusing purely on sort of simple, simpler or the simpler clues. To diem say not conveying the ecstasy of God. Um, no, <laughs> that's no anagram. Eurostate shrugs off the means of making substitutions for English. Well, 15 letters. And the first two words here are 15 letters. And off could be an anagram indicator. And Eurostate shrugs, that's a fairly strange expression. So I would be thinking anagram. The only thing that's making me a bit hesitant here is a means of making substitutions for English would have to be the definition, um, which is quite a, you know, a lengthy definition. But if you give it some thought, I think you can come up with a solution there. So again, pause if you need to. The answer is Roger's thesaurus. So a huge answer there, just and a straightforward anagram. Let's have a look at this one. Top banana viewed is not looking straight. Well, not looking straight could just just about be an anagram indicator, but it's hard to see how viewed is could be anagrammed into two words that would mean top banana, especially. No, can't see what that is. Cold potato, fine. There's no anagram indicator there, so move on. Six down. Fiends in India trapping small bear. Again, not seeing anything to indicate an anagram. Easy consumer items that some might see as lootable. Some might see as lootable. 
Now, I'm pausing slightly there, because I, I don't think this is an anagram, but what I wanted to double check was the number of letters in as lootable. You can see it's not enough, it's only going to be, what is it, it's 10. Um, but the expression that some might see as lootable, I mean, that suggests that if we re rearrange those letters in some way, some, you know, it's possible that that could be an anagram indicator, but it's, it's not giving us anything that resembles the 15 letters that we need. So I don't think that is an anagram. Quickly look up in compartment for flight attendant. Again, there's nothing there that, um, that suggests anagram to me. Style of Sheraton, that style of Sheraton built in Atlanta perhaps. Okay, so this one, this one I would be thinking this could be an anagram. A style of Sheraton, that suggests that could be an anagram of Sheraton perhaps. And built as well, sometimes built could be an anagram indicator. But here, the interesting thing is that we have an E and an I in this answer already. And what, what I can't do is find eight letters in this clue that, that would, you know, would be good anagram fodder that would contain an E or an I. There's, you know, Sheraton, which could be an anagram, you know, doesn't have an I in it. So I th on reflection, I don't think that is an anagram. Sees heron flying, showing ability to be level-headed. Well, okay, this is a good example of what we're looking for. So, flying, that could well be an anagram indicator. Sees heron is 10 letters, so that looks good. Showing ability to be level-headed. So we're looking for an ability to be level-headed. That's an anagram of sees heron. Have a think. I'm going to type the answer now. Digs up with spades always moving. Hmm. Moving can be an anagram indicator, but again, it's quite difficult to see how we can we can make that work when we've got an R in the clue. I mean, there's no, I don't think there is any R in the whole of 16 down, so we can rule out the fact that that's an anagram. A short hold up I had coming down over European city. Nope. I'm not seeing any way of anagramming that. Competent nurses are there initially to do surgical removal. No, I'm not seeing anything that tells us about anagrams. Unfinished heap of stones round major Egyptian site. Finished heap of stones. No. Again, nothing there to suggest an anagram. Shock upset when golf is cancelled. Well, Again, this could be an anagram. Upset is a very standard anagram indicator. Um, but then we need to make this four letters. Um, and I'm not seeing any way of doing that uh, that would make sense. So uh, the, the more natural reading of this clue, I think, is that you're looking for a five letter word that means upset. And you're going to remove the G um, from the phonetic alphabet, so golf, golf is, is normally G in that alphabet, so let's take the G out of a five letter word for upset and give us a word that means shock. But what I think this, this shows, this sort of exercise that we've gone through, is that you can actually make quite a lot of progress just by trying to focus on one simple type of clue. And we've got a lot of possibility to make further progress here because we've got so many checking letters from from this exercise um, now as I say I have I have solved this puzzle so I thought I'd just finish the video by mentioning a couple of the uh, more difficult clues so um, if you want to solve on from here turn off the video now and come back to it um, come back to it later I'm going to talk first about seven down. Uh, easy consumer items that some might see as lootable. Well, this is a very clever clue um, because what it's trying to do is, is saying look at the word lootable 
and try and reread it in such a way that it could be read as um, as a clue to something else. So if, for example, you split up the word lootable into two words, loo and table, then loo, a loo is a convenience, and table is a synonym for food, and easy consumer items consume uh, convenience food. Um, so very, uh, very nice, very clever piece of wordplay there. Um, but perhaps you could stare at that for a long time and not understand what was going on. Um, the other one I wanted to talk about, actually two more, let's talk about 21 down. I thought this was very clever wording again. Competent nurses are there initially to do surgical removal. So very, very natural surface. Um, and the way that the word play breaks down here, well, firstly, let's, let's, let's confirm the definition. Um, the definition is to do surgical removal. And then what the set is trying to get you to do is to take a word that means competent and put that around the outside of the initial letters of R and there. So nursing here is being used in a sort of, you know, if you nurse, you protect, you cover something, you surround it. Um, so very common word for competence is able. Put that around the A and the T and you get ablate, which is to do a surgical removal. Um, and finally, we'll just take a look, I think, at six down. Um, Fiends in India trapping small bear. Um, so it's another use of the international alphabet here. So we've got in an India, in an India, trapping around the outside of small bear is a cub. Oops, I type, sorry about that. To give incubi, which is the plural of incubus, which is a fiend. Um, so a difficult word, but one where if you had the checking letters, i.e. If you, if you got all of the crossing entries there, you could see you had I blank, C blank, B blank. And there are, I think, there's probably only one word that fits that, um, that pattern. So you could sort of hone in, the art, in on the answer that way. So there we go. Uh, I hope that's interesting. We'll be back again tomorrow. Um, if you are starting out on your journey to solve the Times crossword, try and work forward from here because I think, you know, this is a good start and you could all have got this far um, using the techniques we've discussed on the channel. And we'll see you again tomorrow.